Hi, chemistry students. We recently talked about the equilibrium concept and how we write that and the equilibrium expression. And we also looked at how to calculate it. Well, now let's take a look at some properties of the equilibrium constant, which depend on how we balance the reaction. It's a very short idea, but uh, it's worth noting that sometimes somebody may write the reaction differently, differently than you do. So it's uh, worth knowing how to convert your equilibrium constant to match their reaction. So we're going to start with a real simple problem that we've got M, some, some substance M, breaking apart into two products. And we're given the equilibrium concentrations of each of those. And uh, some people will note the equilibrium there. Some people won't. It's up to you. I recommend doing it just because it, it makes it very clear what you're talking about. So just for this reaction, real easily, we can see that the reaction equilibrium, the equilibrium expression, I'm sorry, is going to be the equilibrium concentration of P squared divided by the equilibrium concentration of M. And then we just plug that in, the given values, 0 0.20 molar. We square that. We divide it by 0 0.01 molar. And this gives us 4. Now, uh, just as a note, I did not double my 0.2 just because the balanced reaction says 2P. All right? And the reason is, is what I write down on this piece of paper, this balanced reaction, has nothing to do with what's in the jar. The jar has a concentration of 0 0.20 molar of this, of this substance P. If I write something down on the piece of paper, it doesn't change what's in the jar. So keep that in mind when you struggle with, do I, do I multiply by 2 or not? Just think about what would happen if you were to write it down on a piece of paper and whether it would affect your, um, what's in the container. So that being done, let's take a look at some other people who have, for some reason, written the reaction different than you. They've balanced it differently. One of them even wrote the reaction backwards. So what in the world's going on and how do we deal with this? And I'm going to show you the, you can go ahead and just brute force calculate this if you want, but there's a neat little trick to it. And let me show you how it all works. So let's take this one, and if we, re we what we've got here is K sub C is going to be, not K sub C, just K, will be equal to our P squared divided by our M. And I'm going to look at this next one right here. I'm going to highlight this particular, this particular reaction, and we're going to focus on it, and I'm going to write it in red. And I'm going to call this one K prime, just because I know it's going to be slightly different than our, my other one, or it might be different, it might be the same. So if I write this, it's now p to the fourth divided by m squared. But if I look carefully at this, this is the same thing as writing p squared divided by m squared. All right. And if you take a good close look, look, check it out. That's just the old k. So my new k prime is equal to k raised to the power of 2. It's squared. Okay, I, I, I see what's happening mathematically there, and so that would mean the answer to this would be 16, but take a look. To go from M to 2P to a new reaction balance as 2M4P, I have multiplied the reaction by 2, and I've raised my equilibrium constant to the power of 2. That's the trick. It's not really a trick, it's just that's the shortcut. The shortcut says, the way I get my new equilibrium constant is I raise my old equilibrium constant by whatever I've done to the reaction. In this case, I multiplied the reaction by 2, so I should get something raised to the second power. To ensure that works, let's focus once again on our initial equation, our initial reaction, and go down here to this next one. And according to our story, what we've just said is we should be able to, since this is um, multiplied by 3, we should be able to get our equilibrium constant by doing 4 to the third. So that's what should go in here. Let's actually calculate it out dead on and see what we get. So k prime will be equal to p to the sixth divided by m third. But that's just equal to p squared over m, all raised to the, lo and behold, third power. And this is, once again, equal to k 
k, our original k for the way we balanced it, raised to the third power. So our answer should be 4 to the third, which is 64. But let's brute force it. Let's brute force this. Let's go back to the beginning right here, and let's put the numbers in and see if we get 64. Let's double check our work. So we should get um, 0.2 to the sixth divided by 0 0.01 cubed. And guess what? If you plug that into the calculator, you do get 64. Okay, well, we have our, um, our little shortcut here. Here's our initial K. We have two others to try. And what I'm going to say is recommend that you actually take a few seconds to try these two reactions out and see what you get. Hit pause and then come back and I'll have the answers written out. Okay, so hopefully you've seen that in this first reaction uh, up here at the very top, what you've done is you've multiplied our initial reaction, which I didn't label very well, our initial reaction right here, we've done that one by one half. So since we've done that by one half, we need to multiply or, or raise our equilibrium constant that we had, which was four to the one half. The one half power is the square root, and lo and behold, we get two. If you plug in the numbers directly, you'll get that as well. And then finally, if we go right here, what we've done is we have multiplied this reaction by minus 1. When you reverse a reaction, which is what's happened here, we've gone from m to 2p and then ended up with 2p to m. That's multiplying by minus 1, and we get 4 to the minus 1, which is 0.25, and we put it in there, and voila, we're finished. There you go. Some tricks, to, some, some tricks and trends and, and ways to, get, to do things with the equilibrium constant.